What's going on, beautiful people? The Black Hokage here, aka TBH. And to be honest, I'd like to welcome you guys back to my show, Hokage Thoughts, the show where ain't no hoes. But we do think out loud here on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever you choose to listen to this show. Today in which I'm recording this episode is January 25th, 2020, and we got a lot to talk about. But before we get into the show, please allow me to remind you that if you enjoy the show, make sure to rate this podcast five stars on apple podcast it helps my show move up in the algorithm which brings in new listeners if you want to financially support the show head over to redcircle.com slash hokage thoughts and you can donate whatever amount you see fit um on today's episode we're going to be talking a little bit of gaming gaming industry stuff um Got a little bit of thoughts on the music and stuff. Justin Bieber's wilding. Um, <laughs> and then I got a bunch of really good questions from you guys over on Twitter. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore. I keep it real. Um, but before we get into it, a couple quick news stories. Actually, let me switch on over to the article. So I don't know if you're watching. Yo, check out the video version of this podcast at YouTube.com slash The Black Hokage. So interesting news coming out of the Instagram camp. <sighs> check this out. Instagram is to label photoshopped images with false information warning. (sighs) Let me read this one for y'all. Instagram is continuing to update its platform and combat fake news and misinformation, especially now that Facebook has taken a more hands-on role with the platform. Their latest update will include a feature that labels when it, that labels when images have been photoshopped. The app has said that when the app said that they would be using a combination of feedback from the community and technology that will determine the authenticity of an image. From there, the image will be passed to a third party independent fact checker. And uh, if they think that image has been altered as false information, a warning message will be attached to it. A spokesperson from Facebook commented on the move saying, we don't hide content behind it because it's photo. We don't hide, I cannot read. We don't hide content because it's photoshopped. We apply a label when fact checked has rated it. Upon review from the fact checker, they change the rating, so it's no longer being labeled as false on Instagram and Facebook. <sighs> so, like, this is this is really interesting. So, what this sounds like to me is Facebook and Instagram are trying to, you know, combat all the fake news going on because these platforms are really famous. I mean, motherfuckers believe anything that's on the internet, man. I I could I could literally take an image of me like i could take a picture of me like and get like a five dollar doctor coat off of amazon and put some glasses on to look intelligent and i could literally tell the internet that eating ass cures cancer and like i could put i could photoshop myself into like a doctor's office and stuff like that all i gotta do is get on the green screen and then put like a make a little photoshop image and put the put that put it there in a fake news article and people will believe it people will believe it especially because i have followers they'll be like oh this guy he must be a doctor they're not gonna look into who i am they're not gonna look into and see i'm just a fucking shit talker uh <laughs> so this is good this is good they're gonna be combating fake news how 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 accurate will this be i don't know the reason i brought this article up though is Listen, man, this is good on the political front, but we're not talking about politics on this fucking podcast, man. I brought this up because will this fact checker, like, will it apply to just like regular images or just images that are trying to state quote unquote facts? Because I think false information should be applied to all these Instagram models. So like, are they going to Photoshop? Are they going to label like, you know, certain booties as Photoshopped? (laughs) I'm sorry, y'all. I just wanted to make a joke. I just wanted to make a fucking joke. This is very interesting because it's clear how they want to use it. But I'm just saying, like, you know, for all the all the people out there that don't got because I mean, like some of you dudes out there are dumb as fuck. I mean, if you like fake booties, that's cool. I like a real. I like. Listen, if you slap the booty and it feel like cement, that's not lit, bro. That's not lit. Like when you slap the booty, that shit is supposed to like it's supposed to create like a thunder wave, like a tidal wave and shit. It's supposed to splash like fucking. Uh, what's my man's uh, name like Chris move and shit but that's that's beside the point like some of you motherfuckers is stupid like you don't know a real booty when you see one he'd be like damn she thick no she went to Dr. Miami bro fucking so like if we can get like a false information tag on there to help all the dudes out there because you know y'all motherfuckers is stupid so I'm just curious is this gonna be for is this gonna be for fake fake asses too or is this just for fake news (laughs) so uh yeah if you're on Instagram posting fake shit you better stop um whether it's you know news articles or booty pictures you better fucking stop um the other piece of news that i had the quick joint oh freaking uh la, 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 la. so vine is back vine is back in the form of bite so 
this news is fresh off the press. It literally came out like last late last night. Breaking news. Uh, fucking the creator of Vine has brought back an, uh, basically Vine. They're calling it Vine too, but it, the actual app is called Byte. It's spelled B Y T E. Um, it's six second looped videos, just like Vine, but they're saying that they're coming out with some new features. I don't know if this was in Vine. I don't remember because Vine was so long ago. Like it feels like 2014 was a long time ago. Um, but like I noticed they have like sections on there. Like I, I made an account. So if you guys want to follow me, my name on there is the Black Okage. I actually managed to get my name on there. Um, so yeah, follow me on Byte. Uh, they have sections on there, which I like. So like if I upload a gaming video, like I can put it in the gaming section. So people who are specifically looking for gaming videos, or like a comedy video, that's really cool. I don't remember if that was on Vine, uh, but whatever. That's beside the point. Um, so what they said on Twitter is, dear friends, today we are bringing back six second looping videos and a new community for people who love them. It's called Byte and it's both familiar and new. We hope it'll resonate with the people who feel something's been missing um da, 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 and then they're taking like feedback and all this stuff so far the response from what i've seen online has been pretty positive um if i had one critique for this app because i was kind of studying it last night just kind of figure out what people are posting and what's the what's the vibe over there on bite uh there is no way to natively share content on this app if anybody from bite ever hears this podcast that like if you want this app to succeed you need to add native sharing into the shit and what i mean is like one thing that's really what you can say whatever you want about tiktok what one thing that's really dope about tiktok is it's really easy to share their content and when you share the content it's always properly labeled or um what's the watermark i mean so like on TikTok, not only can you share directly to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all that shit, but you can also download videos. And when you download a creator's video from TikTok and you re-upload it to Twitter, at the end of the video, there will be a splash screen with their with their username, so you know the account to follow. So when people steal your videos, they can't actually steal them. Also, there will be a watermark like on the lower left with your username, so nobody can really steal your videos on TikTok unless they download it on TikTok and then upload it to, uh, then put it in their video editor and try to crop out like your watermark or something. And at that point, if you're working that hard, you're just a fucking bitch. Um, so there's no way to like natively share videos, whether it's directly to Twitter or like doing like the download. But at bare minimum, can we get the, you would think that would like, they would have like that basics. Cause I made my account and like, I was like, wait a minute, how do I share my profile? You can't like copy and paste the link and then post it to Twitter for people to come to your profile. So like you literally have to search my name on bite in order to follow me. And that's, that's dumb. Um, that's like basic social media stuff. So let, let's, let's get to it. Also, what are you guys going to be doing that's different? Uh, are you going to be able to monetize your content? Cause that's why Vine failed in the first place. For those of you unaware, um, apparently like all the biggest Vine creators back in the day went to Vine and said, Hey, we want X amount of money or we're leaving your platform. Basically creators have figured out that they, they know, they know their worth. Now they know that their money, like the platform is only as big as the creators. And Vine was like, Nope. So they all left. They all went to Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, and all this stuff. And Vine collapsed. Um, and that's kind of why you're seeing, for those of you unaware, that's kind of why you're seeing, uh, things come full circle with like Twitch. You're seeing a lot of streamers leave Twitch or even stay on Twitch to go to Mixer, Facebook, or stay on Twitch. And they're getting cut big checks to stay on these platforms and stream exclusively because these platforms have figured out these platforms are only, it's, it's a symbiote relationship, bruh. They're only as big as the creator. Like hardware is nothing without the software. The hardware is the platform, but you know, PS4 is nothing without the last of us, if that makes sense um so bite what are you doing for the creators instagram is fucking up i'm i'm low-key kind of giving up on um igtv i don't know if y'all noticed i really haven't been posting on there as much uh i thought that was going to be the way but it really looks like they're not really supporting it maybe they'll roll out some new features and i'll try it again but there's no way to monetize it doesn't really seem like it gets views it seems like regular videos get better why am i talking about instagram who gives a fuck um that, that, social media <laughs> am i right <laughs> but yeah uh congratulations to vine you're back in the form of bite um what's the name one more social media platform for me to have to uh freaking uh manage inconsistently Oof. social media all right um like i said gaming music questions whatever let's get into the gaming side of things all right so if you follow me on twitch at twitch.tv slash the black okage you would know that i have beat another game because i beat my games unlike other people in gi and the latest game that i've completed is astro chain astro chain is an action adventure game from platinum games it's exclusive to the nintendo switch um it's one of those games where, like people were coming in my chat and they were like what is this game um this shit looks dope as hell and unfortunately because it's a nintendo switch i don't think maybe 
it probably didn't get as much uh, promo as it needed but it's a very slept on game from late 2019 um it's made by platinum games if you're unfamiliar with platinum games uh have a pretty good pedigree they've created games like vanquish bayonetta one and two um what did they just recently do uh freaking hold up let's look up platinum games i'm platinum games oh uh the, the long but not forgotten scale bound who called on my phone who auntie is that the long but not forgotten scale bound uh freaking uh near automata metal gear rising uh they pretty much just drop fire they've had a couple misses with like that legend of Korra game and the ninja turtle game but for the most part they make they make good games they make good games um but yeah that's just some of the games that they made so you should kind of get an idea what you what you're getting here it is an action adventure game um i wrote down let's see one two three four five six six positives and one two three four five one, two, three, four negatives. All right, so let's get into it. Um, oh, by the way, this review will be based off of the current price of the game. I just checked Amazon. The game is, this is really freaking weird. The game is $50 for the hard copy, but it's $60 digitally on Amazon. So it's actually cheaper to order the hard copy and just wait a couple days if you got Amazon Prime. Um, but basically, this game is pretty much still full price, um, if you're wondering. So my, I, I know the review is late. It's a few months late, but the game is pretty much still full price. So that's what I'm basing my review on. Um, so let's get into the positives. First positive visuals. This is an anime themed game. It's not based off any anime, but it has that anime kind of art style. Cell shaded. Um, the the, the cutscenes are really well done. Uh, the voice acting is okay, but I really like the art style and the world. Um, it just looks really nice. And the way I knew it looked really nice is when I was streaming the game, a lot of times people were coming to my chat and they were uh, the, the first question they were asking is what game is this? And then also um when i told him when i told him it was a switch exclusive people were like damn this is a switch exclusive this is one of those games like it would surprise you like wow this looks really good for like a switch game it shows you that you know not everything is about realistic graphics uh it's also about art style and uh it's definitely squeezing some extra power out of that nintendo switch so visually the game does look nice um second positive combat this is platinum games platinum gets they made bayonetta 2 one of the greatest games of the last decade bro easily easily so you already know the combat is going to be good that's what they're famous for um if i could explain the combat it's similar to bayonetta but then not really i, I take that back I, I, that's very misleading it's not similar to bat and bayonetta so it is a hack and slash like game but it's all about stringing together combos the only thing that it has in common with bayonetta though is it does have a perfect dodge in here so if you dodge a uh, an enemy's attack at the right time it'll slow down time um, but the difference is like it felt like in Bayonetta when you did that you could just combo somebody up and this when you perfect dodge it slows down time but it works better as just strictly as a dodge unless you're like behind the enemy because when you perfect dodge all it does is it slows down time it doesn't really manipulate combat it doesn't give you invincibility frames so like a lot of times i would perfect dodge and i would still get boxed up if i wasn't in the right position so then i would just slow down time for no freaking reason um what makes the combat really dope in this game um is so the reason it's called astro chain is you play a police officer i know you got fuck 12 but it, it, it's, it's space police okay you play a police officer who has i forgot what it's called but you have this like watch like a ben 10 watch and inside is this robot that you can control basically a gundam and it's tied to you as a chain you're basically a robot slave owner um and this robot has like five different stances so not only does the police officer the main character that you're controlling have attacks but your your chained gundam has attacks too um and you have multiple weapons with the police officer so you start off with a baton you can get a heavy sword and then you also have a gun for different types of stances um and then also your robot has five different stances the five stances were you start off with sword you get arrow um you get like big heavy hands for like heavy hitters you get an axe you get a doll and a dog that's the five and each has their own little special attacks and you have to um find ways to basically string the attacks together and also what's really dope is the thing is stuck to a chain so it kind of limits your uh your mobility you slow down a little bit but then you can also use it to wrap around the enemy and chain them up you can also use it to like trip enemies up uh you can like clothesline them with the chain and then you can do all these special like lightning attacks these heavy attacks these aoe's and stuff and on the surface the combat seems simple but once you start combining and stringing together all the different combos and understand how they work together the game is pretty deep um so because of that that's really dope and the skill tree is really really deep as well too so like i said you have five stances for each robot that you control 
and each robot has its own skill tree and you as when you when you go throughout the game you'll collect like xp and you can allocate what type of abilities you want to get what type of ones you want to build um so there's a lot of content here a lot of reason to explore because this game is a it's, it's a semi open world it's broken down into levels but like the levels can be pretty big and you get to explore a little bit and you want to it's one of those games kind of like the outer worlds where like it's not really open world but it has like little nooks and crannies if you'd explore you can get some extra xp and find some side missions and stuff like that so like the combat mwah, just fun i love platinum games did it again man i just love platinum games games um let's move on to the negative so the first negative uh the story was predictable it's not bad i'm not gonna spoil anything like i said you play the police officer who controls his robot gundam ben 10 watch um things are not what they seem I, you can i let me put it this way because i'm not going to spoil anything you can see where i personally i could see where i was it was going but i still enjoyed the story so this is really isn't a negative this one's more of like a neutral but i put it on the negative because i guess i don't know it was predictable but i still enjoyed it for what it was because it was so fucking anime this story is so anime it's full of fucking tropes and just dramatics and shit and the the, the cut scenes are so beautifully crafted in terms of the action like I said, I don't even know if I want to put this as a negative. It's kind of like a neutral. It was like, it was like, eh, it could have been better. But, you know, if you turn your brain off and enjoy the ride, it was, it was, it was cool. It was cool. Um, another positive boss fights. Woo. This game is full of boss fights after boss fights and they are fun. Um, oh my God, the final boss. I'm not even going to lie, bro. Like that was one of the most intense boss fights that I've ever seen. Um, I damn near, I damn near cried on stream at twitch.tv slash the black Okage. Make sure to follow me um but boss fights come dime a dozen and also now that i think about it i forgot to write this on my notes this game introduces a lot of enemy types you are con even up to the end of the game you are constantly running into new enemy types so it constantly mixes up the combat because they have different attack patterns but the boss fights are really dope because a lot of them are massive in scale so it requires a lot of great timing and platforming um i just i just think the boss fights are great i love good boss fights um another negative the frame rate the frame rate was stable for the most part but if i had to compare it to something i would actually say it ran similar to bayonetta 2. bayonetta 2 was a wii u exclusive and for the most part it ran at 60 but it would dip down to like 40 and 30 when things got intense it's basically the same way with this game for the most part the game runs smoothly but especially towards the end when the boss fights get freaking epic and there's just a bunch of shit just flying on the screen sometimes the the, the frame rate does chug along and because this game is so based off of you know perfect timing and stuff like that it can mess up the flow of combat so keep in mind that the frame rate can get a little bit of shaky but i feel like platinum did the best they could with the hardware that they had in the nintendo switch um third positive this game is not purely action uh platinum games actually tried something new with this game in the form of investigation so like i said you play a police officer and there's a lot of side missions and main missions where you have to investigate things that are going on and you have to use the robots and your ben 10 watch to scan the area almost like on, you basically get like a batman scanner mode um and you had to and you had to question people you had to follow trails and clues and stuff like that so if you're into investigations at first it kind of annoyed me but once i started to understand the flow of it it was okay to me like i, I learned to tolerate it and i thought it was like decent um and i wasn't the biggest fan of it because i prefer the action but at the same time i i'm gonna give kudos to him because i it's more of a personal thing for me the why i'm not a big fan of it i feel like most people will like it matter of fact most people that i've seen say that they played it in my twitch chat said that they did enjoy it it's more of me i'm just not a big fan of the slowing down stuff but i still gave it a positive because i felt like it was well done and also i'm giving them kudos because they tried something new they could have just they this game could have just been pure combat uh rolling around doing combos and stuff like that but platinum tried something new and they played to the fact that you are a police officer um there are even missions where you get to um carry boxes like uh death stranding which i thought was funny uh it was exactly like death stranding i was like wow why would i ever buy that game uh <laughs> negatives uh next negative um difficulty spikes oh my god the first half of the game i breezed through it the second half of the game started to get a little bit difficult and then like that last fourth of the game like the difficulty just spiked through the roof it was like it was a lot of trial by fire missions where like there was literally like a mission where you had to fight like all the fucking bosses that you fought in the past all at once and then you had the final boss fight i was like 
I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I had to cut the stream off. I beat, I beat the game, but I had to cut the stream off afterwards because I was mentally taxed afterwards because like this motherfucker just kept evolving. It, it, it honestly, it, it turned from a plat, especially with the final boss fight. It turned from a platinum games fighter, a platinum games action game to like it felt more like Dark Souls. It was like one two move, one two move, because you couldn't stay in the pocket too long. Like the dodging didn't matter. The boss was so fucking hard. The diff, it just like I rather the game just gradually just got more and more difficult as you learn the abilities throughout as you continue to play it but instead the game is pretty easy like the first half and then like that second half it just gets hard out of fucking nowhere I'm oh, 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 oh. and it just felt like a completely different game and it's like i, I felt like they could have balanced the difficulty a little bit better if i had to critique that um next positive uh, I feel like I don't put this on positives a lot, but I have to praise the OST, the original soundtrack. The soundtrack in this game is fire. Literally everybody when I was streaming this game, they was like, mm, mm. I, it, it has a nice little electronic um, anime style style to it. It has original singing in it, a lot of EDM in there. Um, very up tempo kind of uh, rave music. Like, but like I liked it though. Like it just fit the game perfectly. Very anime. The soundtrack is just fire. Some one of the best soundtracks that I've heard in a while. Like I would definitely listen to this again. Like if I was like on YouTube or something. Like I might type it in every once in a while. Astro Chain original soundtrack. It, the soundtrack is fire in this game. Trust me. Trust me. Um, and the last negative that I have on my list is this game has poor lip syncing. Uh, this is a really weird one for me because y'all know I watch, I watch dubbed anime for those of you unaware. Dub game. Doo -doo -doo. I don't know what that was. Um, check it out. Uh, the game is dubbed. It's in English, but the lip syncing. Y'all know I'm not. I don't complain about stuff like this because I watch dubbed anime like that. But even for me, the dub on this was fucking horrible. It wasn't necessarily the voice acting. The voice acting was average at best. It was just poorly lip synced. Like they would, they would say like the enemy's over there, and then they mouth would move like thirty seconds later, and it's very noticeable. I'm like, yo, you guys could have took a little bit more time to better sync the voices to the characters. It just looked bad. It looked like it was a little bit. It was not a little bit. It looked like it was a lot of bit rushed. Um, so I got, I got to critique the lip lip syncing. It's very noticeable and annoying. Um, it's it's bad. Um, and my last positive is side missions. They had a lot of interesting side missions. They put you can tell they put a lot into thought into detail. It's not just your typical uh, fetch quests. There are other things like you know, uh, I remember there was one mission where this dude lost his cat, and then I found the cat, but the cat wouldn't come to me, so I had to throw a can at it to to bring it in, and then you catch the cat. Uh, there was a Death Stranding box mission. There's racing. There's a lot of different interesting side missions. Um, that I thought were fun. I, I ended up doing a lot of them. I thought they were fun. So I, th I thought the side missions were cool. So, and there's a lot of content here for those of you uh, aware, uh, unaware. Let me see how long to be. I want to say I spent at least 20 plus hours on this game. There's a lot of content here for a single player game. Astro Chain. I was actually surprised. I was thinking this game was going to be like 10 hours, but nah. Yeah. So uh, according to howlongtobeat.com, this is a website I use when I buy like single player games to help me understand what I'm getting into. Um, the average port, the average portion person, I cannot talk. The average person has reported the main story took them 19 and a half hours so 20 hours like i said um main story plus some of the side missions on average took people 27 and a half hours and if you want to beat this game 100 on average it takes the person 75 hours so there is a lot of content here uh in terms of a single player game not to mention it's like devil may cry it's all about the style and the points because there's a point system at the end of every mission so if you want to master the combos and stuff like that you'll be spending a lot of time here so in terms of content don't don't worry it's a single player game with a lot of content um and that's kind of that's all the things that I had on my notes in terms of Astro Chain. So you're probably wondering, would I recommend this game? Like I said at the beginning of this review, right now on Amazon, Astro Chain is going for fifty dollars for the hard copy or sixty dollars for the digital version. I 100% recommend this game. Um, if I would have did a top ten game to 2019, this would have been one of my favorite games. This game was fucking amazing um, for the most part. Besides, oh my god, I forgot to put this. I gotta add one more negative. The ending sucks. The ending fucking sucks. Uh, it was like sequel bait or some shit, but that, that's beside the point. Even though the ending sucked, just letting you know, I still recommend the game, even though it's like $50, $60 still. I still think it's worth playing if you have a Nintendo Switch. Is this a reason to go out and buy a Nintendo Switch if you don't have one? I don't know about that, but if you already own one and you're looking for something to play, absolutely. This was a really good game. I enjoyed it. I know. Now here comes the comments about, wow, he recommended a game, even though I just recommended Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and I recommended The Outer Worlds. I've been recommending games. I, I literally just seen a comment on one of my YouTube videos because I did a video talking about um, the top 10 best selling games of like the last decade. And because I wasn't a fan of Red Dead Redemption 2, it was like, oh, all he does is recommend 2K. I, first of all, I've never... 
2K20 fucking sucks, bro. I get on that game to troll people. I don't play that game because it's fun. Fucking, I just do it for content. But if I didn't wasn't making content, I would never play that fucking game. That game fucking sucked. It's broken garbage. Um, so I don't even know where that narrative came. Why am I ranting about it? Who cares? False narratives are annoying. That, that's all I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on Astro Chain. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, you know, watching the video version, leave a thumbs up, all that bullshit. Um, let me take a swig of this water. <sighs> that hits the spot. Next thing I got on my show notes for the gaming side of things. This is not really gaming related, but more so gaming industry. Um, Jenna the racist. <laughs> so if you're not in tune with the Twitch community, there's this streamer that goes by the name Jenna. I don't know her channel. Honestly, I don't even want to know her channel because it's, it's Jenna something. You can look it up if you want to. I'm not promoting that shit. I just know her name is Jenna. Um, some 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 uh, some messages leaked online. Uh, she's a fairly decent sized streamer. She's pretty popular because when I looked, she had like 50,000 followers on Twitter or something like that. Um, messages leaked from her discord revealing that she's uh, a racist. Uh, there was well over like 3,000 messages of just straight bullshit fucking talking about black streamers in word this in word that just a lot of hatred in this woman's heart and the only thing i wanted to say about this the wild shit about this is it's funny too because there's a clip look it up on youtube twitter searching jenna twitch streamer racist i'm sure you'll find something the funny thing about this is fucking whoever leaked those messages her messages on discord to people that she was like messaging um she got a hold of them on twitter she found she saw the leak and she was streaming and while she was streaming she was reading the leak and like if you could see her face like you could tell like her heart dropped like oh shit it's over for me and the worst part about it is this chick didn't really apologize she basically snitched on herself because here's the thing about the let me let me tell y'all something about the internet right like okay there's no way to 100 prove something is you unless you admit to it on the internet when it comes to like like let's say like a twitter dm right you could be talking shit about somebody in the twitter dms and somebody could take that person could take a screenshot of it or somebody who got a phone of their, theirs there somebody got a hold of their account could take a screenshot and leak it online all you have to say is i was hacked or that shit was photoshopped nobody can contest what you're talking about bro this chick was on stream reading the leaked messages from her discord and she was like, I don't remember saying this. She's like, I, you know what? She admitted to it. Basically, I'm like, what the fuck? People are this stupid, yo. People are this fucking stupid. I'm like, but you know what? She didn't. She didn't lie about it. She she knew her ass was on trouble, but she knew she knew what she did. So normally, I don't get involved in like this drama stuff. But what annoyed me most about this story is two things. So if you go through some of the messages, you can, you can find them on Twitter. Um, one thing that irked me in specific is, I know this sounds horrible, but I'm the type of person that I uh, I, I don't really have faith in most people. Like I, I expect the worst out of people. If you if you have low expectations, you can't be you can't be disappointed. Like a lot of times, a lot of times, if somebody's like genuinely nice to me and they're a very genuine person, that's like that shit blows my life. Wow, this person is really nice. That shit blows my fucking mind. I expect the worst out of people, especially certain demographics. Um, and fucking so like it wasn't it doesn't surprise me that this streamer came out as racist because I've always said that because I interact with some of these people at events and shit and I just catch a weird ass vibe from a lot of these fucking streamers and YouTubers. They fucking weird. I've said this fucking shit for years. Just because your favorite streamer is popular for playing video games does not mean they're a good person. It does not mean that they don't have blind spots like my, and, and the worst part is fucking these people a lot of these people they think because they grew up and they were bullied for being a gamer that they they think that they know everything about fucking life and shit you may be bullied for being a fucking nerd but you can still be a fucking shitty ass racist i mean come on y'all know the xbox live days it still goes on today you get on a fucking game they they shit on you because you're a woman they shit on you because you're black they shit on you because you're gay whatever any kind of type of difference I'm sorry, my mouth is dry. So none of that shit fucking surprises me. Um, what, what what annoyed me the most though is if you go through some of those messages, one that stood out in specific to me and why I got involved. Because you follow me on Twitter, I added her and I told her I, I was like, I'm snitching. I'm I'm telling Twitch staff, bro. What annoyed me most about this situation is in one of the messages, um, there was some black streamer that they were talking about in the messages, and they were like, she's black, ha ha ha, reported. I'm like, oh no, that's what we're not doing. You can be honestly, you can be racist. I don't give a fuck. Uh, long as you're not fucking with people. 
Like keep keep your hatred to yourself is what I'm saying. I don't give a fuck. Keep that shit to yourself. But when you when you're sitting in your Discord with your community and you're just literally going through the browse browse section on Twitch and reporting streamers strictly because they're black, not because they broke the rules, but because they're black. Nah, I'm on your ass now. I'm on. I don't like that shit. I don't even. I didn't even know who that streamer is that they were talking about. I don't need to know that person. All I need to know is you're fucking with people for no fucking reason. Nah, I'm on your ass. I'm not cool with that shit. So she got on stream, did the whole, you know, white girl tear shit. I, I can't remember. I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I couldn't do that. Get your whack ass out of here, bro. Nobody want to see that shit, bro. But let this, let this be a lesson. This is the shit I be talking about. And, and I repeat, just because someone is popular for playing video games or they're a popular vlogger you watch or whatever, doesn't mean their ideologies align with you, okay? They, they're popular for playing fucking video games. That doesn't mean that they're experienced in life, especially because a lot of these motherfuckers be 18, 19, 20, 21, don't leave their house trying to be full-time streamers. They don't, know, they don't know shit about life. All they know about is Spyro the Dragon and Fortnite. They don't even know about Spyro the Dragon. They know about fucking Fortnite. Most of them don't even know shit about gaming. They're, they're fucking Fortnite streamers, okay? And you know, the worst part, like another example I can give you too, is like, I remember, um what was like a, like a year ago or something i had dinner with like one of the twitch staff and he was like you know i love going to dinner with you and talking to you and i was like why he's like because you're one of the few streamers that i i get to hang out with and like you can hold a conversation about anything we'd be talking about sports politics life anything and he's like i love that shit it's like it's refreshing i was like what do you mean he's like i take out some of these other streamers to dinner um because his his job is basically his job at that time he's been promoted his job at that time was basically to first of all for anybody who tells you there's no politics involved in twitch there is i, I can tell you because I've, I've been involved with the those politics i've been at those tables uh his, his job basically is to wine and dine people like he'll take people out if you let's say if you're at pax east or TwitchCon, you link up with him he'll take you out to dinner and tell you about all the new features coming to twitch and what's going on on the back end and you can suggest things on how to improve the platform you know, like Illuminati meetings, basically. Uh, <laughs> uh, and fucking, he was like, yeah, anytime I take any of these other Twitch streamers out, he's like, "All if you don't talk to them about Fortnite, they literally just sit there and they're awkward, they're quiet, and they, they, they're just weird. I'm like, that's the shit I be talking about, bro. Just because you're good, just because you know how to build a hut, a metal hut in fucking Fortnite, doesn't mean you don't have blind spots, bro. You know, being, being black, being a gamer are two different things okay i was black before i started gaming and i'm gonna be black well after if i ever decide to quit which i don't ever see myself but it's two fucking different things it's two different things and don't think because you got and this 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 is for people who listen in too. people who who are not people of color or any type of minority group don't think for a second because you got bullied for playing video games because you're a fucking nerd don't think that you're not a racist or i'm not saying you are a racist you can't be a racist is a better way of saying it or you can't be um prejudiced about something because being a gamer and real life shit are two fucking different things um so stop stop gassing these people up bro just enjoy their content for it. That's why I be telling people, stop gassing me up, bro. Like, I just be I just be playing video games on the internet. Yes, I say a lot of real shit, but for the most part, I just be playing games on the internet, having a good time with my friends, bro. Stop gassing these people up because they know how to build a fucking metal hut in Fortnite. Fuck them, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so, you know, uh, since she's been discovered to be a closet racist and a weirdo, uh, they ran her ass up off the internet. Um fucking uh she's been pretty quiet oh you know another thing that uh that pisses me off about this type of stuff um when stuff like this happens uh pay attention to how some of your favorite creators react to this shit because that says a lot too um if you see people are not really like speaking up on these situations like uh, one thing that pisses me off is people in the twitch community are always talking about booby streamers and shit like that first of all shut the fuck up bro I'm, I'm really tired like as i've gotten older i've really realized that a lot of dudes really do hate women you motherfuckers are weird as shit bro like we just because a woman shows a little bit of cleavage cleavage it does not mean that they're a booby streamer maybe they just want to be comfortable just like you want to be comfortable okay you don't want your balls sticking to your fucking thighs all the time so you know you wear loose shorts it's kind of the same thing with like a t-shirt bro but even if let's say even if they are a booby streamer who cares they're not stealing your views your fucking content's just whack whenever you're constantly blaming other people that's why you're in the situation that you're in bro it is statistically proven when you are attractive you have an advantage over everybody in life it's not even about streaming and every workplace an attractive woman or an attractive man will be hired before your ugly ass 
So why are you why are you on fucking the internet attacking everybody? That's just the way life is, bro. You're just mad you can't fuck them bitches, bro. Uh, <laughs> what am I talking about? Yo, I swear to God, I always go on these fucking rants and shit like that. But that's real shit. But that's beside the point. Another thing is pay attention to how some of your favorite creators respond to some of like this racist shit. Because I be peeping that shit, bro. And that shit be annoying me. Um always talking about booby streamers and other shit that doesn't fucking matter but when some real racist shit goes down y'all don't be calling nobody out i don't where where are my where are my white allies at y'all be real quiet on these topics i'd be paying attention i'm just saying stop gassing people up because they know how to build forts in fortnite bro there's other things that, that go on in life and like i said I'm, i was a black man before i started gaming you motherfuckers ain't gonna disrespect me it's a certain way we move. I ain't into that goofy shit. Uh, why'd I just snort? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yo, rate, this, rate the podcast five stars on fucking Apple Podcasts, bitch. You know, one of the main reasons that I shied away from clones and body sprays is because of personal experience. We all know someone who's applied too much ax in high school and in college, and it left me with the impression that cologne was for people who don't shower or they're just trying to mask their funk. As I've gotten older, I've realized I was wrong. A shower will have you smelling good, but cologne will take things to the next level if used correctly. Hawthorne smells amazing and they've made getting cologne easier. Hawthorne uses an online quiz to help identify the hygiene products in their lineup that best works for you. They'll ask you things like your skin and hair type, how often you shower, hair length, age, how often you apply deodorant and more. This custom experience is what separates Hawthorne from the pack. My quiz led to me receiving two very masculine scents and if you know anything about me, you know I love that masculine stuff. My girl does too and now she wants me to wear Hawthorne on every date night. Their deodorant, shampoos, and body washes that I received also are products that I've incorporated in my daily routine because I can feel the difference in quality. The best part is Hawthorne is totally risk-free with free shipping and free return. And since Hawthorne is a sponsor of the show, I got a special deal for all the listeners of Hokage Thoughts. Head on over to Hawthorne at Hawthorne.co and use the code Hokage at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. That is Hawthorne.co and use the code Hokage at checkout for 10% off your first purchase at Hawthorne.co. Um, another thing, another thing that uh happened in the Twitch community recently that everybody's making like a big deal out of. I'm not gonna talk too much about this. There's another streamer, I'm not gonna say her name because I don't want to promote her, but I'm sure if you look it up. Come streamer entitled streamer begs for donations and good subs <laughs> freaking there's this one streamer she was basically crying because nobody subbed to her in the past hour and she was like how do you watch me for hours and you don't sub and that? well maybe because your content is good check it out right you don't have to beg for subs and donations if your content is good um your content should be your content should communicate value and if there's value there they'll support you maybe it not be today it might be tomorrow there's days where i don't hit my sub goal and there are days where i blow my sub goal out of the fucking water and do you know why it's because i understand that some days some people might have money and some days they don't and that's okay but if your content is lit people are gonna come back people are gonna come back to you um and watch you that's why i'm never scared to take a break uh, sometimes you'll see me take a week off or something like that because I need some me time to get away. I'd be tired of talking. I'm not a big talker, even though I run all these different podcasts. I'm not a big talker. It mentally drains me to sit here and talk and just speak my mind because people are pussy as fuck. People don't want to hear the truth. People are pussy as fuck. Um, why did I grab that? I don't know. That's beside the point. So, yeah, if your shit is lit, people are gonna support you. It's just you got to figure out ways how to get yourself out there. Um, but here's my hot take on this chick that was crying about the donations and the lack of subs and stuff like that. Um, leave this girl alone. <laughs> um, I hate to break it to everybody, but technically she did not do anything wrong. Um, yeah, like she's being mad, aggressive and annoying. And it is very entitled, like morally it's wrong, but she didn't I, like she didn't. She's not hurting anybody is what I'm trying to say. And maybe just a theory, maybe because she had like two, three hundred people in her chat. Maybe her audience likes that. Maybe it's some type of weird, you know, BDSM type of abusive relationship because there are a lot of dudes out there that like that. That's like the hot e-girl that they watch that abuses them and shouts at them. Oh, she's yelling at me. That's making my cock so hard. I'm going to donate. You know, like you don't know what people are into. And reality is if they're not into it, just fucking ignore it and she'll go away. OK, like she wasn't really popping like that anyway, but it looks like from according to her social blade, her channel's growing because everybody's talking about it. You see, that's why I ain't saying her name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. If you don't, just Google entitled Twitch streamer crying on stream and you'll find what I'm talking about. So shut the fuck up, bro. None of this shit matters. None of this shit matters. Yo, music side of things. Let's talk about it. So Justin Bieber 
uh he released a song i don't know why i said that bieber bieber shout out to a little b um justin bieber released a song it's called yummy if you haven't heard it it fucking sucks so i don't blame you but let me give you the summary of it basically the song goes like this gang you got that yummy 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 all right so first of all i'm gonna get my opinion on this song i'm not a big justin bieber fan here but um if i had to give a hot take on this this song is weird as shit this song is basically about eating pussy and it's weird because like his audience is like young you know like this, like low-key this is like some pedo shit like his audience is like little teenage girls and shit and he's singing about eating pussy and shit uh because i don't know no real niggas listening to justin bieber so he i don't know man i don't know about this and then also this song was weird too because clearly this this is one of the you ever heard a song and it's like yo this is this man clearly made this record because he wants all the tiktok girls to dance to it this song was specifically designed for tiktok and I mean, I, I, I'm on TikTok. I'm always studying the platform and I do see a few e-girls dance. I mean, the, the real big e-girl song that everybody's dancing to is uh, Doja Cat's uh, Shouldn't Say So. That song, that's the e-girl song. But like I see, I feel a few e-girls, they're dancing to the Justin Bieber song. But this joint was clearly designed for e-girls on TikTok, but it's it's not working because Roddy Rich came through with the box. Same thing with Selena Gomez. Do you believe in magic, head ass? Um, you know, not to sound like a hipster, but fucking. Um, when I first heard Roddy Rich is the box, I knew that shit was gonna go. I, I've been listening to Roddy Rich for like a year and a half now, like before he started popping off with this this album. Not to sound like a fucking hipster, so like I was already a fan of him. And when his album dropped, I listened to it the first day, and. The first song came on, it was lit. And then the second song on the album is The Box. And when I heard that shit, ee, er, ee, er, I, it's funny. I literally hit, I was like, yo, this is a meme right here. And then the beat dropped. I was like, ooh, this is kind of hard. I was like, I, it's one of those songs like you hear it. And I was like, this, this joint gonna go. This is the one right here. I was like, and I think he knew it was gonna go too because it's the second song on the album. So it's like, you can't miss it if you have halfway of a fucking a decent uh attention span so i was like i knew this joint was gonna go now i didn't think it was gonna go this hard it took his album to number one thanks to the streams and stuff like that so justin bieber is fucking sweating and selena gomez sweating hard as fuck and they basically begging their fans to stream the song to beat Brody rich out because he's had the number one album for like the last two or three weeks but what's really fucked up about this situation is um it's not it's okay to promote your music you should promote your content it's the way that at least bieber went about it selena gomez didn't do it she just came across as thirsty and desperate but bieber literally went on instagram and this man made a post saying stream yummy nothing wrong with that and then you slide over and you look at the second slide and it says the best way to stream yummy to make it number one is play the song as much as possible also play the song add it to a add it to as many playlists as you can and also stream it while you're in your sleep basically he was telling people to leave the computer on leave your computer on leave your phone on and just stream it on re on repeat non-stop i'm like all right bro fucking that's not that's not promotion that's system manipulation because for those of you unaware i believe it's 1500 for every 1500 streams that equals an album sale and streaming is free i mean they do have spotify premium and, and stuff like that but i mean you can listen to spotify for free with ads so it, he's basically telling his audience to stream the music over and over and he's trying to manipulate the system and the worst part is the worst part is this man didn't even he didn't even he, he didn't even beat roddy rich you cheated and you lost like so now you look fucking crazy and then yo shout out to roddy whoever i don't know if he did it himself or if it was like his pr team or his management team yo they like they say kill him with kindness this man roddy rich put out a tweet saying yo stream justin bieber yummy and you know what that did psychologically it made everybody go stream the box i saw that shit i was like hey stream i stream in the box bro what the fuck selena gomez did the same shit he fucking made a whole instagram video hey guys a uh, long time no see this is what she said too the numbers don't matter but like i really do want this number one you know if it doesn't matter why the fuck you talking what are you talking about you can't you can't claim you care about something you don't care about something and then proceed to claim you care about something what are you talking about right hey guys selena gomez believe in magic head ass here if you guys can give me my number one nope the streets is in here roddy rich did it organically um the music was fire it turned into a meme they picked it up on twitter and tiktok the people supported it um i think streaming is changing the game the internet is changing the game to where these big these big artists like justin bieber and selena gomez that have big conglomerates behind them big record labels behind them 
uh you you can't you can't just push that manufactured shit because now now that real shit is accessible to everybody bro it's accessible to everybody so you know about to pull out the lane and get lazy i'm just saying <laughs> pull out the whole ass and like get lazy you know and then she had, had the cash app her so justin bieber you get an l selena gomez you get an l stop doing this shit um i really hope that billboard takes a look at what justin bieber did and make some new rules and regulations saying you are not allowed to manipulate because clearly there's no rules on this I, I you would assume there were but clearly there are no rules on this uh let's not let's not allow these artists to manipulate charts and music let what's natural go number one stop letting these people say stream yummy don't nobody want to sh- listen bro if motherfuckers wanted to listen to that that way guy you got that this nigga is 25 talking about guy you got that yummy 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 first of all i like to eat pussy but I never referred to pussy as like yummy. Like it's just, you know, something fun to do with your girl and shit. But like real niggas, real niggas is not grown men, grown ass men is not like, yo, you got that yummy, yummy girl. You got your pussy is just so you shut the fuck up, dog. That shit is goofy as hell. That goofy shit out my face. I'm tired of talking about Bieber. Let's talk about something else. I hope that's the first and last time I have to talk about this nigga on my podcast. Uh questions. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of questions a lot of good ones they come from twitter so follow me on twitter at mr underscore i keep it real if you don't already um let's see how many questions we got one two three four five six seven seven of these big things um and then after that we'll be done all right so first question comes from von luciano on twitter follow me on twitter at mr underscore i keep it real <sighs> I had a sandwich from Publix earlier. I just burped it up. Ugh, I'm not gonna lie, my breath is hot. You lucky there's no you lucky there's no breath o vision in fucking fucking podcast. Anyways, Von Luciano says, yo, uh, he says, I already asked Flock this. Yo, shout out to um Flock, by the way. He's a member of GI, the stream team that I'm on. He has his own podcast, and this is what he's referring to. Flock has his own solo podcast where he talks about life and shit similar to mine. It's called Unfiltered Facts on spotify apple and every other podcast outlet be sure to search it unfiltered facts by a leader of the flock all right he asked i already asked flock this but i want a different perspective on it what are three things that you were told that you still live by to this day and will stick with you the rest of your life um this question is kind of hard to answer in the sense that you said it will stick with you the rest of your life i, I feel like we as humans were constantly evolving so i would say to kind of better just kind of adjust your question i would say I think these will stick with me to the rest of my life because I don't want to definitively say this will stick with me the rest of my life because 10 years from now, I'll probably be, I'll still be the same person at my core, but there'll be, there'll be certain new values that I hold and maybe these things will change, you know? Um, I would hope that you're, you're evolving as a person. That's what life is all about. Um, so the first of three things that stick with me, these are the ones that I came up with. I have a lot of mantras that I live by, but these are three that kind of came to my head. The first of which comes from my father. I always say he didn't teach me much. I think I said this on the podcast, but the one thing he did teach me and used to hammer in my head was friends are overrated. Um, not in a, And I, I used to not understand that when I was younger, but like I understand it now. It's not it's not. He didn't mean it in a literal sense, like, you know, don't talk to nobody. But what I think he meant was keep your circle small. Um, you see, I don't really get involved in a lot of drama online I, i'm i'm i pretty much stick to creating youtube content podcast content twitch content i meme on twitter every once in a while drop some jokes i interact with you guys that's it like every once in a while somebody will come from my head because motherfuckers be lying and shit but like that but for them i keep my circle small so it keeps the drama out of it and i be hearing about all the dumb shit that motherfuckers be going through because they they be friends with everybody motherfuckers is over most most people don't know who they are so you don't need to befriend everybody because it's just gonna people are sponges man people are sponges and you keep you let all that negative energy into you like it may not affect you today but maybe tomorrow or the next day you could overflow with emotions um so like i definitely feel like having a lot of friends is overrated i don't i don't feel the need to be friends with everybody i don't i treat content creation like a job bro i do don't get it twisted i genuinely enjoy entertaining people like i always have my entire life 
but I do treat this like a job in a sense that once I hit stop recording on this podcast or stop streaming, you know, I'm going to go get hugged up with my, my boo and I'm chilling. Like, I just want to watch Netflix. I don't want to entertain people. I don't need to be friends with everybody. That's not the case for most people. Most people, they do their content. Then they sit in discord and watch movies with niggas all fucking day. Be a hundred niggas in a discord watching Bambi and shit. What do you get out of that, dog? Like, I, I get it helps your audience feel closer to you. But like you gotta you gotta reserve some me time for you because not every you can't be friends with everybody. You gotta that's I think personally I'm one of the most mentally healthy people on any platform online. And that's because I I take time to myself. I'm not trying to be friends with everybody. I can't listen to everybody's problems. I understand that I cannot save the world. I can do my part to help a little bit, but I cannot save the world by myself. Um the second thing, this this is a lesson that I got from my wrestling days in high school. Um, so when I, when I wrestled in high school, um, there was a, we used to have like a bunch of mantras on the wall to keep, keep ourselves like motivated and stuff. And the main one that always kind of stood out to me is there was a poster in our wrestling room when we practiced and it was like the main poster and it was pain is weakness, leaving the body. Um, that is something I learned in my wrestling days. And it's something that's kind of stuck in with me now. Whether it's physical or mental, I always say this is weakness. Whenever I'm feeling weak, I always say this pain is weakness leaving my body. When I'm in the gym and I'm not feeling motivated or um, it sounds goofy as hell. Like I'm like I say, I'm running on the treadmill or something like that. And I'm trying to run for 20 minutes and I'm down to like the last five minutes. And it's getting kind of hard because I picked up the pace. You know, I just say in my I always tell myself, quit being a pussy, quit being a bitch. This is this is the this is this is that weakness leaving my body. I need to push past my limits, like Captain Yami says. This is the weakness leaving my body. Um, or like I got a couple more reps on my lift I gotta do. I'm on number eight out of ten. This is weakness leaving my body. Um, it's not gonna kill me. So I always I always tell myself pain is weakness leaving my body. Um, it's not gonna kill me, so guess what? It's gonna make me stronger. Um and then the third one that I came up with is, um, all right. So I, I don't know if I said this one on the podcast. I feel like I've said it on stream once before. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, this is for people who deal with a lot of drama and shit, especially if you lit, like, let's say you the hottest nigga on your block and shit. Uh, <laughs> um, I've heard two different versions of this. It honestly doesn't matter. You could say the wolf or the coyote. Uh, I prefer the wolf. All right. So this, 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 this analogy goes like this. When a wolf howls at the moon, the wolf is just being the wolf. It's only when the moon howls back that it becomes news. I repeat, the wolf, when a wolf is howling at the moon, that's just a wolf being a wolf. It's only becomes news when the moon howls back. If you need, if you got drama in your life, that's how you deal with it. Do not be the wolf, be the moon. It's a lot of wolves out here. Be the fucking moon, elevate the wolf, the wolf, the wolf is just looking to eat, you know? fucking trying to lead a little pack or whatever the moon shifts tides shift the tides be be the influence you know and like i said and then also just think about it that that's a really cool that's a really cool metaphor that like i forgot who told me that i I heard this one a long time ago when i was like a kid and that shit just kind of stuck me that's why a lot of times a lot of people be saying little snake shit about me in their videos or on streams and stuff like that be saying little goofy shit mainly because like they don't know anything like i don't talk to a lot of people so i i promise you i listen nine times anything you hear about me if it wasn't from me i promise you it's not true and i had this interaction with a streamer when i was in fucking new york um i thought we had like a cool vibe and i was like you know maybe i'll let her into my circle you know and network or whatever and she said some slick shit to me um obviously i'm not gonna say what it is she said some slick shit to me about um we were talk- we had good conversations about business she said oh i heard about you you be in all the girls dms i'm like who did you hear that from She's like, mm, I don't know. Like, she didn't believe me. Like, I was like, I don't be, I do not, listen, I do not be trying to, I know I'd be joking about fucking nerdy bitches, but like, I don't be fucking none of these nerdy bitches on Twitch or YouTube. I don't be trying to fuck none of them, bro. I just be networking with people. But I'm like, who, who told you that? I don't talk to anybody in the community besides GI. And I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to get this reaction. I was like, you got it, dude. Like, whatever. So just stop responding i I just get annoyed where did i even go with that i just get annoyed when people be lying on me but for the most part i I ignore people and that's why it only becomes news when the moon howls back be the moon just be above that bullshit bro 
um it, it most nine times out of ten is gonna go away like the only time you'll ever see me respond is when somebody just blatantly lies on me and that could potentially fuck with my money i can't be having people thinking i'm going around trying to you know fuck every chick in the fucking twitch community and shit because that's far from fucking true that is far from fucking true um so that's those are the three things that kind of that kind of stuck with me uh coming up maybe i'll find some more life lessons i'm on a quest for knowledge these days maybe i'll get some new ones i'm trying to meet new people do new things um hopefully that answered your question to the best of your ability um fucking oh also kind of to further elaborate on that too like i said when the moon says something back to the wolf you know people don't expect anything from the from the moon and a lot of times what you'll what you'll see is like the wolf just wanted some attention like wow the moon spoke to me wow bruh just focus on shit in the tides all right i'm done with that um <laughs> um so the next question comes from the voker and he says here's a thought-provoking question tbh do you think you're in a position in your life because of self-discovery which led to self-mastery basically you knew who you were from a young age you knew your strengths and catered to them to be financially independent same thing with ethos and anon ethos knew he wanted to be a developer from he's speaking of, he knew he wanted to be a game developer from a young age and pursued it anon anonymous knew that he wanted to be an artist early self-discovery led to early self-mastery and may come with a certain tier of introspective thinking that a lot of peeps don't have yes i do agree with that i think as I, as i've gotten older one thing that i've realized is most people lack self-awareness uh most of you are not going to believe what i'm about to tell you but to answer your question, I figured out probably at the age of five or six. I don't remember when it was. A, it was a very early memory of mine. I figured out at probably about the age of five or six that I that I was charismatic and funny and people like to follow me. Like I had like an aha moment amongst my friends. Like I just realized that all the kids in the playground followed me and they did whatever I wanted them to do. Um, and so because I understood that I had that charisma to lead people, it kind of led me down certain certain uh, paths um any position that i've ever been in has always been a leader a position of leadership um like when i wrestled in high school i was the captain of my team uh i was on the who on my phone i was on the leadership team i was on the leadership i'm not least i was in the leadership club in high school the funny thing is i got put in a leadership class in high school because um my what was it my all my teachers got together i okay believe, this is a true story believe it or not i got kicked out of my fucking history class my my government class my 12th grade government class uh for an entire month straight and they put me in the library and made me do book work because the teacher literally could not control the class because and she hated me because i was the type of person where like she was trying to teach but i was always telling jokes and entertaining them in the class and i would really piss her off because to, and try to to try to embarrass me she would ask me a question about what she was teaching and nine times out of ten i got it right because not because i'm the type of person like i understand that knowledge is power but like i do like entertaining people too so like i was a smart ass basically like I could entertain and control the class and I could answer her questions too. And I used to piss her off. So she had to put me out of the class for like a month. Then I got put out of another class for like a couple weeks too. I think it was one of my computer science classes or something like that. So then I guess all my teachers, I remember one day I got a note from one of my teachers and they was like, meet us in this room during lunch for like 15 minutes or whatever. And I walked in that day and literally all, I think it was like, it was, it was like seven or eight periods or something like that. All my teachers we're in this fucking boardroom sitting down i'm like oh god i'm about to get expelled or some shit like that uh and they basically just went around expressing basically like positive things that they liked about me and then things that they didn't like about me basically me manipulating and controlling the room with jokes and shit and just entertaining everybody um and they proposed instead of suspending me or kicking me out of school they proposed that i be in leadership club so they could teach me how to be a positive leader and all this other shit so i mean it ended up being good for me um so yeah i i figured out at a very young age people follow me um i'm not 100 why I, I understand i am charismatic um but I, i'm gonna be honest with y'all i feel like a lot of shit i say on this podcast is common sense to me it's very it's very simple stuff um but I've learned as I get older that I guess it's not like they say common sense isn't all that common. And it's like you hear that phrase all the time, but it's like, wow, y'all really don't get it. And I guess it's because people lack mentors. Um, I, I realized when I was younger, I mean, I realized now I'm older when I was younger. Um, my dad didn't teach me a lot, but I did have a lot of OGs. Um, mainly they mainly came from like sports teachers and uh, like the gym. 
a lot of for some reason like when i would be like in the sauna at the gym after i work out i'd be like so like when you work out like when you're like a people if you're a regular in the gym it doesn't matter how well in shape you are when you're a regular in the gym people give you respect they're like oh i see you putting in work you get that head nod or you know when you really get in respect when people start asking you for like you know spots yo can you spot me on the bench or whatever and like at 16 17 i used to always be in the gym because i was trying to stay in shape for uh, wrestling you know you had to make weight and i was trying to put on muscle and stuff and like when i would be in the um weight room or i would be in the sauna like a lot of the ogs that go to the gym they would speak to me and just ask me about life and stuff like that and they would put me on the game and stuff like that so like looking back i had a lot of mentorship and i think a lot of people lack mentorship uh what am i talking about oh yeah did it lead to mastery yeah so did it lead to mastery i don't feel like i'm a master i'm gonna be honest i'm 29 going into 30 and i feel like i'm just now starting to hit my stride i can't talk about it now but i do have some things and i also don't want to jinx it i do have some things that i'm working on that could potentially lead to making a whole lot more money i'm talking about like some white folks money on turn in terms of uh what some of these compared to what some of these other streamers do because there's definitely a uh, pay gap going on just like everything else uh but uh i think i'm finally starting to hit my stride um i think it was a lot of people want me to just troll and tell jokes all the time but i think it was important for me to start speaking and actually actually speak in my mind because i think it uh it holds more value i think there's more value in me talking about life experiences and giving actual i don't know tips on things because people can take that and apply it to their life and it's much more relatable it's not it's not relatable when i troll it's just funny you know and it's funny for the moment it's something for you to turn your brain off to but what i'm saying in this podcast i think will go a longer and also it'll help me age better i don't like you got to constantly be evolving you can't constantly keep doing the same thing over and over and i would hope as you get older you get wiser um but this is the way that i think especially because motherfuckers are stupid bro like i don't want to say like my audience is stupid uh but like people really believe what you show them one thing if you can take out of this is just because you see a youtube video or you listen to somebody's music or you watch an actor and an interview or something it doesn't mean you know them people show you what they want you to see that's the purpose of editing um and like where's i going with this freaking i think people have this idea of me because they've seen me make a lot of joking videos that they understand who i am um i've also learned talking to a lot of small creators a lot of people think that i've fallen in the positions that i'm in by accident um because a lot of times when i talk to smaller smaller creators and i give them advice they'll be like oh you know a lot man like basically you're smarter than i thought you were people be really be thinking i'm fucking stupid or something um and it's funny too because in order to be funny i think you have to be intelligent and very observant i told you i don't talk a lot i observe a lot what makes people funny is they are able to basically look at their environment and extract unique experiences out of what everybody else saw um so yeah i think i think me figuring out who i was at a very young age helped me but i don't think i'm a master right now um i don't want to be mid-tier i consider myself a mid-tier creator i want to be top tier and i'm i feel like i'm just now starting to hit my stride and figuring out what type of what really adds value to people's lives which is going to elevate me i think in the next couple years um the next five years or something like that we're gonna see but i i i got faith i'm lit i'm lit um the next question comes from reg corley uh, he said, hey, bro, another CC question. I don't even know what that means. Maybe. Oh, content creator question. What are some positives and negatives of any in choosing what other content creators to network network with outside of GI? If I've had network networking conversations with about five people so far and about two have been kind of off putting any tips for peer networking. How do I choose who basically to be cool with? I just go off vibes. Honestly, I'm probably not the best person to ask for networking. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a lot of enemies in this business, probably because of my mouth. I'm not afraid to speak about shit um, and bullshit. Uh, but as far as networking, honestly, I go off vibes. Um, a lot of people are fake. A lot of people are bougie. A lot of people don't care about you unless they see your numbers and shit. Like I, like I always say all the time, I'd be at every damn big event, right? I'd be in the room with a lot of these big streamers and YouTubers and shit. 
and they don't because I operate on an I, I always say I operate on a different side of the internet. Most of my audience is black and Latino and we're a very underserved market. Um, and specifically, I feel like I have that that kind of Donald Glover audience where we're too we're too black for the white kids, but too white for the black kids, because I don't feel like I appeal to the 2K community, because if I did, I'd be much bigger. Um, so basically, basically, I have intelligent black folks is a at least a good portion of my community. I don't want to say all. Um, and I like uh <laughs> so a lot of these a lot of those bigger streamers and youtubers don't know that like i exist because i'm on the other side of the internet so they won't talk to me even though i try to talk to them they'll you know give you the oh yeah we'll see you, or brush you off they only just give you looks and shit. and then i can't tell you how many times like i've met people at events and then months later they'll find somebody that i'm cool with retweeted me on their timeline and then they'll look at my picture and they'll be like oh yeah well, you were at that such and such event and they'll follow me and why because they see how many followers there are because i never i never interact with people be a human when you network be a fucking human because people will remember people will remember you being a cool person they had a beer with or a pizza with versus just somebody coming up and pitching numbers i never talk about my numbers when i network i just be like hey how you doing this that and that because the way that my brain works is let's say we're at a we're at a ubisoft event right and there's 20 creators in a room at the Ubisoft event to play the new Watch Dogs Legion. If 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 you're in this room, you're a person of importance. It doesn't matter how important or how big or who's the biggest in the room. If you manage to get into that room, you're important. Whether because you have big numbers, you know how to network with people, you know how to do something, and there's some type of value that I can extract from you. So there's a reason for me to befriend you. That's how my brain works. But the way a lot of people's brains work is if you ain't got at least a million subscribers, I ain't heard of you. You ain't shit. You could be you could be in the same room at a Jay-Z party or some shit like that. I'd be like, who are you? So I, I go off vibes. Is the vibe right? Is the vibe cool? Um, and that's why you see me. That's why you see me. I don't really talk to too many people uh, because the vibes be just a little bit off. And then also a lot of people don't really be caring about you or what you're trying to do. Most people just nosy. Be aware of that just because they there for you don't mean they there for you. They just there to get info so they can go tell their friends about you and shit. So catch a vibe. If the vibe is cool, follow each other network. Especially because you never know. Don't put nobody down. Like let's say you meet somebody in an event. Don't put nobody down and they cool as hell because they're not as big as you. You never know where somebody's gonna end up being. So that's what I would say. I don't know if that helped, but that's what I would say. The next question comes from Mr. Mosby Rap. Does it pain you sometimes to keep it real? Your assertiveness never makes you feel guilty at all, as the young people would say. How do you truly not give a fuck? Um, I think I'm just hardwired this way, to be honest. Um, so the friend Gypsy, she made me take this. She like making everybody take this damn test. The Myers-Briggs test. If you're unfamiliar with it, Google it. You can take it online for free. Um, it's called Myers Briggs test and it's a personality test and it breaks it down into all different types. What is my personality type? Uh, I just asked her cause I forgot cause I don't completely believe in this shit. It's kind of like a blueprint. Um, apparently mine is ESTJ. All right, let's look up this personality. ESTJ personality. Um, uh, all right. So according to Myers Briggs, the ESTJ, which is my personality, uh, my personality um basically they're like the leader personality and you have like each personality has like different strengths and weaknesses so uh apparently like my personality some some comparisons on this website is john d rockefeller which is you know the big oil tycoon or judge judy you know the tv person um my strengths and weaknesses is basically um like i'm good at like being a leader um inspiring other people let's see um i'm dedicated strong-willed direct and honest loyal patient and reliable i enjoy creating order and an excellent organizer but apparently my weaknesses is i'm inflexible and stubborn i can be i can be like that i i, I feel like you have to explain to me the value in something in order to get me move I'm, I'm not easily influenced uncomfortable with unconventional situations um yeah i'm definitely uncomfortable around like a room full of white folks um says judgmental i don't feel like i'm judgmental um and this, this is my problem with the thing like this is supposed to be like a blueprint to help you better understand yourself but like she was telling me that, that there's this and then there's also like your nature versus your nurture where basically like this is my nature but like things can be nurtured out of you so like if this like she was telling me one of my weaknesses with my personality type is i have a hard time with like moving 
Like I'm very, my personality is supposed to be the type that hugs the block. Basically, I'm not good at uh, basically moving to different environments or basically. Like, let's say there's a there's a there's a there's a job in another state. I would be scared to go to another state. Basically, I'm I'm scared to travel. Basically, um, but that doesn't apply to me. I hop on planes all the time, and I was explaining to her probably because my dad was in the military that got nurtured out of me at a very young age. So this is basically like your nature, and then you have your nurture, basically what your parents teach you to help you. Uh, excuse me help you get out of things uh now there's some more of my weaknesses uh i have a hard time relaxing i do be stressed out um and then difficulty expressing emotion uh probably um but basically the reason i brought up this myers briggs and this my personality type uh, feel free to look it up i said i'm estga you can look up whatever you are the reason that um that uh i brought it up is because apparently with my personality type i have a hard time comp i have a hard time comprehending how i make other people feel like like i said my i'm very a very forward speaker and like sometimes the way i say things may out off put people even though i'm not trying to offend them and i don't understand why i'm trying to offend them and i had this conversation with gypsy the other day and like i would say that probably applies to me when i was younger but i'm at a point where i do understand that people take me as a very blunt person and a very assertive person um because i'm a little bit i'm older now but I would actually argue that I don't actually care now at this point how I make people feel like because listen, man, you're not going to make it anywhere in life if you're not able to extract the lessons out of the things. You're so worried about how somebody says something versus what they're saying. That's exactly why you're in the situation that whatever situation that is that you're in. I'm the type of person where you may not you. You could be aggressive with what you're saying, but if you're saying some real shit, there's a lesson to be learned there. And I feel like a lot of people just be fucking talking. I've, re I've, I've realized as I've gotten older, people just be fucking talking, bro. You don't actually, you can literally Google anything you want in life off your fucking phone. And you niggas is asking me, how do you record gameplay? Like, you and Elgato, it's not a secret. Uh, HDPVR, fucking uh, shadow play. None of this shit is a secret. Like an, an example, an example being every fucking stream. I swear to God, follow me on twitch.tv slash the Black Okage. At least five or six people ask me, should I build a PC or should I buy a PC? How many videos with tons of information have I made telling people build a PC because you'll get a new skill? And it'll be cheaper for you. So then if you want, you can build PCs for your friends and charge them. People are still asking me the same questions, bro. The same fucking questions. Because most people don't actually care. They don't want to do it themselves. They want you to do it for them. And I don't feel bad for people. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Where am I even going with this? I don't know. Like I said, it's kind of just in my personality. And I've just kind of accepted that's who I am. So if you want to better understand your personality, check out that Myers-Briggs test. From my understanding, it's not 100% accurate. I don't 100% believe in that shit. It, like what I got assessed as, it does describe me to some degree. But like I said, there's your nature versus your nurture. And then also, like, I also think this stuff is, it's a little bit scary too, because I feel like people can take these little personality tests and then they will be like, oh, that's just, you know, the way I'm supposed to be, because that's what the test says. Like it can, it's supposed to be like a blueprint to give you an idea of what you're working with and how you can better improve yourself. But like, don't use this as a crutch. Oh, I can't, I can't become a dedicated person because according to the Myers-Briggs, it says that I'm not a very dedicated person. Um, so that's why I don't 100% believe in this shit. But according to this shit, my personality, I just, I don't understand. I literally do not comprehend how I make people feel when I say things. Um, to me, when I'm telling you the truth, I'm just telling you the truth. And as I've gotten older, I've learned that like, yeah, people do, when I say things, people do create entire narratives in their head. And that shit is really weird to me. I, I legit don't understand it. Like I can tell you, like, I don't care about something and people will interpret that as fucking you. Like, that's not what I said. Like, I just don't care. Like, that's not what I think about. Like, I, there's other things that I'm worried about, but they'll interpret that as a fuck you. And that's because some people are very emotionally, I, very emotional and I'm very unemotional. Um, I'm only really emotional towards people that I actually care about. But if I don't know you like that, I honestly don't give a fuck. It is what it is. So if you want to get more in tune with yourself, check that stuff out. It is interesting. Um, yeah. Ah, we pod and pod and boy, my mouth is dry. Oh my God. Next question comes from Frank and he says, if you look back at yourself in 2018, early 2019, did you ever think you would move out of DC, especially Florida? So this kind of goes back. I only put this question on there because this kind of goes back to further prove what I was talking about earlier. 
Like people take things at face value. They lack comprehension. Oh, by the way, he put a laughing emoji. Did he say when he said, did you ever think you would move out of DC, especially to Florida? If you missed the last episode, I moved to Orlando. Um, I always feel like it's obvious that I'm a very sarcastic person. Like when I slander other people's cities like Cleveland and Philly and shit like that, I just be talking shit. I don't actually hate your city. I don't even honestly care. I'd be making shit up. Like half the time I'll be like, yo, they got super mutants in Cleveland. That's just what I heard. And motherfuckers be taking that shit seriously. And I, I'm, I be feeling conflicted with that because it's like, should I feel, should I constantly explain myself or should I just let them be stupid or like, it's just jokes. It's just exaggerations. Obviously, there are no fucking. Obviously, there there are some pretty women in Philadelphia. Most of them are ugly, but <laughs> that was a joke. I just I, I think it's really interesting, right? I'm 12 years in the game, bro. My first YouTube channel was in 2007. I started my gaming channel in 2012. I'm 12 years in the fucking game. You motherfuckers claim to watch me all the time, and you people still don't get my sense of humor. At this point, is it me not expressing myself correctly, or are you stupid as fuck? I think you're stupid, Frank. I, I'm gonna be honest, and that's okay. That's okay. We were all stupid at some point. Um, I don't hate everybody's state. I don't hate everybody's city. I just be joking, bro. I be creating conversation on Twitch. That's it. And just to enter, it's just to entertain people. Like if you can't laugh at yourself, fuck you, bro. Get over it. Um, <laughs> uh, next question comes from Visual Sound P, uh, and he asks, "How can you build mental toughness from within?" Uh, this is a quick one. Uh, the only way in my opinion which by the way before i started this question is the q a shit i forgot to say this like everything that i say is not law these are just me trying to answer questions to the best of my ability you can do whatever you want uh and in my opinion the best way to build mental toughness from within is just to experience as much life as possible try to experience as much rejection as possible everybody be so fucking afraid of rejection and when i say experience as much rejection as possible I'm not saying go out there and purposely do a bad job so you can get rejected. I'm saying put yourself out there more because you're more likely to be rejected, if that makes sense. Statistically speaking, um, the more you deal with the rejection, the better you'll be at um, having do, uh, dealing with rejection, which will, build, which will build mental toughness. So you just need to get out there and get more experience and stop being afraid of everything. Like Take your first step. Get your foot in the fucking door. That's why so many kids, I think, are pussy nowadays. Everybody gets a fucking trophy everybody get everybody gets a fucking trophy and then you wonder why your child grows up and doesn't know how to take a loss because he didn't take his first loss until he got out of college and applied for 20 jobs and found out that life is pretty fucking hard if he would have found that out earlier he would have been a little bit mentally tougher you know um fucking that's just the way it is do -do -do, do -do -do, do -do -do. things will never be the same so get out there experience more of whatever you want to do in life I think naturally you'll build more whatever it's like if you want if you want one thing get out there and like make it a habit to talk to a new person every day you see somebody with a vegeta shirt on be like oh man you love dragon ball I love dragon ball too what's your favorite episode just talk to people build up that mental and some people are going to reject you and some people are going to want to talk to you and if you focus more on those positive experiences eventually you'll get over rejection i i don't care about being rejected i don't look at it as no and i don't look at it as no as uh no i look at it as right not right now if that makes sense the only time no means no is during sex y'all better not be out here you know what i'm talking about don't do that shit during sex no means no but other than that in terms of like business and trying to you know progress yourself no just means not right now it means maybe you're not prepared it also might mean that they're not hiring um it might mean she has a boyfriend or he has a boyfriend or they're not looking for a relationship whatever it is specifically that you want to be mentally tough in right now um, just go out there and experience it more and naturally you'll get better. And that's everything in life. Success comes from, you know, fucking Lil Wayne says a lot of fucking dumb shit that I don't agree with. But one thing that he said, I remember in a documentary was success is just repetition, uh, constant repetition. I cannot talk reputation, reputation, repetition, repetition. Success is constant repetition. You just got to do things over and over and over and over and over and over and over to the point that you can do it. And it's not even something you're thinking about. It's it's second nature. Just naturally do it. That's all we did. When I think about it, like in high school, that's all we did in wrestling practice. Coach would go over certain um, certain wrestling techniques and then for like 30 minutes in the last hour and a half, because practices were like two hours on average. The last hour and a half was literally just practicing that, doing it over and over and over and over and over. So you learn how to do a single leg uh, takedown without even thinking. It just becomes, you know, instinct, muscle memory. 
uh, muscle memory. So there you go. Get money, fuck bitches. Uh, and the last question comes from Mr. Loudy. He says, do you think it's okay to quit a job that doesn't make you happy? I don't have any major bills and I live with someone and I'm only 22. I always wonder if I'm making a poor decision of quitting a place that has a shitty atmosphere, gross bathroom, break rooms, and shitty customer. You're only 22. What I will say is I had to break it to you, but you, you're going to have to do some things that you don't want to do. But I would say in this case, because you have a place to live and you don't have major bills, it's okay to quit your job, I think. The only thing I would say is like, just make sure you put in your two weeks notice, leave on a good, leave on a good notice. And also I would encourage you to look for a job, have another job lined up and ready to go before you go to, before you put in your two weeks notice. That way, when you quit, you can go start your other job because even though you don't have any bills and a place to live, one thing I always say is like people, uh, like they're letting you live there because they see you're working towards your goals. You shouldn't quit your job and then just start sleeping on the couch because then they might kick your ass out um so stay motivated just make sure you got something else lined up because uh i get it like shitty jobs i've worked a lot of shitty jobs too so i mean just make sure you got something lined up that's all i got to say i wish i had something deeper to say but i'm tired of talking um so hopefully you guys enjoyed the show if you did make sure to rate this podcast five stars on apple Podcasts. um go check out that new mick jenkins project it's pretty fire that's what i've been listening to I'm still listening to Chinks Taste 5. I don't really have any other thing music that I'm listening to. Um, Fucking um, Pop Smoke is an idiot. Um, Fucking stop saying free these rappers that are out here committing crimes. Keep them. Keep them. Um, (laughs) Maybe welcome to the jail cell. Um, Anyways, I'm joking. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's all I got on my show notes. So I'm done talking. I appreciate everybody listening. Make sure to uh, rate this five stars on Apple Podcasts. If you guys want to financially support the show, head over to redcircle.com slash Hokage Thoughts. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode of Hokage Thoughts. Thoughts.